Okay, um, Chuck Wall, a counterclockwise guide and recap from the last race round. Here it goes. This is coming out of four. So right here on this exit, we wanna make sure to get over to the right as quickly as possible. Um, think of it as um, after we've driven out to the curb here, let's make sure we get our radius, uh, hold that radius to get the bike over as quickly as possible. Um, staying on the throttle, we can transition our body before going to the brakes, um, transitioning to the left, which makes uh, the bike a lot less um, unhappy when we go to the brakes. Um, my brake reference was about the three cone, maybe a little before it. Um, and I'm trying to get some good straight up and down braking before we get to the curbing, which we'll see in a second. So right here, brake markers around the three board. It's going to be different depending on your bike. Um, the bike was a little slow this weekend since we weren't running race gas. So, um, we might have to change this if we, if we have a little more power. Um, I'm trying to do some straight up and down braking parallel to the curbing here. Um, and I'm using this start of the curbing up here as my tip in reference, or maybe just a little before it. Here, this is a spot I was struggling with all weekend. Um, this is... Um, it's tough for me to tell if this is really an entry or an exit corner. There's a good amount of acceleration off the backside here, um, but over pointing the bike uh, is what I was tending to do and then not using all of the uh, track on exit, which was setting me up too low for um, two and one, which we'll see in a second here. Good references or maybe the, I, I was staring at that cone back there, but you can use the trees up here. And really what we want to do is drive the bike out to this outside curving, which is going to set us up for two and one. You notice that there's still some like track left over here. This was, um, I think the cause of my bad drives getting onto the front straight and where I was losing a good bit of time. Um, if you'll watch the other bikes, they'll kind of start pulling away on me here from uh, three into two and one and onto the front straight. Um, there's not a good marker here. I've kind of just been giving it like a, a good fist of throttle. Um, there are a couple of seams on the pavement here and um, missing spots where the curving meets the pavement that I've been using as like a, a brake and turn in reference. Um, there's not a lot of straight up and down braking here. Really, I'm just going to the brakes um, to get the front loaded so I can start turning the bike. Um, we're using the brakes more for direction here than we are for speed. Um, this is an exit corner for sure. The goal here is um, you should be able to start driving as soon as you're not going to run off the inside on the right for one. So um, the cone is about right for where you should be apexing, um, maybe a little bit earlier than the cone, I would say. Um, but if you feel like you're going to be running too wide, it's, it's a manner of just playing with the throttle um, on the transition. Um, and in this transition, this is something that I've been struggling with a lot. So I'm reminding myself more than anything, um, move your butt before moving your arms. Don't do it all at once because that's what's going to cause the bike to wheelie and get really upset um, and cause some like a tank slapper. So on the throttle, as we start to build out, we first move the body and then move, or move the lower body and then follow with the upper body. Good drive out. Um, so I'm trying to stay wide open until after the three cone. Um, it's a lot less scary if you can get your eyes in here, or fortunately we have a rider that we can look at. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, given that they're ahead of us. Um, but uh, if you get the brakes loaded properly, you can typically get beyond the three, if not the two cone. Um, and we'll see that in the data as well. Um, so the tip in here is about maybe somewhere between the three and the two cone, um, pretty similar to where the braking starts. It's a pretty, like the turn in rate is very slow. Um, and you can almost think of this as like a straight line into the corner, um, whereby um, a majority of our hard braking is happening 
um, sort of like as we get past this first curb and we are, the bike is being stood up to transition to the left. There's kind of that initial um, heartbreaking and then we let up as we turn in a little bit. And then as I pick the bike up, we go to the brakes a little bit harder, um, get the downshifts done early. Um, the longer you wait for the downshifts, the more chance the bike will be upset on uh, when you get to your turn in point and for the left. And uh, obviously then you can't turn in and you'll compromise the corner. So here, be patient, be even more patient. I was really struggling with drives out of this corner. I feel like this cone is too early. Um, it's a little somewhere a little bit after the cone, but if you get to the, your neutral throttle is too quick here, um, it'll start to push you wide and then you'll, you won't realize you're wide until it's too late and you've already screwed up the corner. So just be really, really patient with your neutral throttle through this corner and let the bike finish the turn. Um, a good exit reference is the corner worker station as we come out over here, right there. Same thing here is uh, coming out of four, get the bike over as quickly as you can, hold that radius and do your um, body transition from left to right while you're still on the throttle to keep the bike from getting upset. Uh, braking is before the curb. Um, I'm using the, the start of the curb as my reference here. Um, and I'm kind of tipping in right as I'm getting to the curb, but it's a bit slower of a turn in because I still want to use the brakes here. Um, we were struggling a bit with um, the rear wanting to come around on the brakes at turn in here. And so just being more deliberate about getting your straight up and down braking done before you start initiating that little bit of turn in so you can get off the brakes smoothly and not um, compromise the rear. I really love this, the drive, uh, this particular rider did getting out of this corner. You can see that their, their apex is uh, right around the cone, a little bit after maybe, and they're able to pick the bike up and get it driving uh, better than what, what I'm doing on this particular lap. Um, same thing here, brakes are right around the start of the curb, maybe a little before it. I feel like I was tending to rush this corner a little bit this weekend. Um, and it would cause me to have, uh, however, I was getting better drives than um, some of my references coming out of this corner. So uh, start of the curbing is about right, maybe a little bit before um, to get on the brakes. There's not a lot of time for straight up and down braking here. It's you're almost immediately back on the side of the tire. So um, make sure you're efficient with it. Good exit reference is this corner worker station. Um, as I'm braking back here, we're, when we're in here going to the brakes, um, we try to get our eyes up just to catch this reference to orient to it so that when you're coming up on this curving in the cone, you have a good sense of where you are. And then we can we know we can start driving as long as we're not gonna run off the inside of the racetrack here. Um, typically there's enough time to get over um, after this corner. So I will use all the curbing here and all the exit. Same thing, hold the radius, get the bike over the right quickly. Um, we've got to set up for this next corner, transition your body on the brakes or on the throttle before going to the brakes, um, to keep the bike from getting upset. There is a ton of racetrack to run off into here. And we'll talk more on that in a second. I'm using the start of the curb here as a little before the start of the curb as my roll off um, and transition to the brakes. I grab one downshift quickly um, and it's not very heavy braking. Um, we're looking for our slow point somewhere in the middle of this huge, huge sweeper. So what we're trying to make sure we do is um, carry the brakes there, but not over slow to get to there because there is so much time you spend rolling through the middle of this corner that um, compromising that is, um, that roll speed is a, is a huge detriment to your lap time. We also wanna, this is a really strong banking so you can let the bowl slow you down. And if you feel like you're coming in too hot, just commit to the corner and that you're gonna make it. And you'd be surprised just how much speed you can carry into this corner 
um, without really having any drama. Um, the higher up into the bowl you go, maybe like three quarters is a target. Um, the higher up into the bowl mid corner you are, the easier it is to finish the rotation and drive the bike out because you've made the corner wider. Um, so that is also something to keep in mind. So be patient, let the thing rotate. You can see that um, our direction change is happening a little earlier than the rider in front of us. Um, and that should give us a little bit better of a drive coming out so long as we um, make efficient use of that. Same thing, move your body over. Um, I don't use all of the exit here because I believe this corner, which is a setup for the back straight, matters a lot more than the full exit here. Um, this, I'm trying to get the bike as far left as I can and parallel to this curbing prior to initiating this corner just because it allows you to carry the brakes um, deeper in and you don't feel like you're rushing this corner. This, this is an area I've been struggling with all weekend and it's something I'll need to revisit next time we're there. Um, just from anecdotally looking at this race, I was almost always getting absolutely destroyed on the exit onto the back straight here. And that all comes from this setup. I'm holding this radius a little longer than the rider in front of me. And maybe that's part of it. Um, and that I'm over pointing and just losing too much speed. And as a result, I'm looking for the end of the curving here, which is this white triangle. And that's typically when I'll initiate my transition right there. There it is. So we've let off, uh, let go of that radius. And one thing, um, to think here is start to build the throttle, but don't go, don't build too much, build to maybe 20, 30%. Um, hold the throttle there and then initiate your transition with your body before finalizing out the drive. And you'll know um, it's a, the quicker you do this direction change and transition, um, the faster you can get back to wide open throttle. And so depending on like where you come off of where you let go of this radius and initiate your turn, you'll either not use this curbing or you won't use the rest of the track on the outside. And that can be good reference points to let you know if you've done it right or if you need to change your approach. So you see, we did not use all the track. There's maybe a foot left of track here. So in my opinion, I believe I'm holding that radius too long, um, which means that I am um, not using all the track on the exit when we could be otherwise like going through that corner a bit faster and um, having a, a wider radius. I'm just over, over pointing the bike before initiating the turn in there. And that's probably worth a couple tenths. Um, brake marker here should be like, at least for my particular bike on a, uh, on this R6 is about the four cone, if not somewhere between the four and the three. Um, I know I can break deeper into here. It's just very mentally difficult, um, to stay wide open when you see this corner coming at you. Um, I found that the best way to do this is to spot your, the braking marker somewhere, oops, sorry, somewhere here. So there's our braking marker. And then what we're going to do is get our eyes into this corner, which will help us slow down our perception of speed and uh, let us realize that there's a ton of runoff here and that, you know, cooking this coming in too hot here is not really the end of the world. This, uh, the dirt behind this area is also very flat um, and totally rideable if you really needed to run off. So um, take that as a, as a comforting fact when you're um, trying to push your brake marker into this corner. Uh, tip in's about the start of the curb here. So we've got some good straight up and down braking with multiple back shifts. Um, tip in's, uh, I, I've been using about the start of the curb um, and or this cone feels a little too late to me. Um, anecdotally, because I believe that turning in earlier here with a slower turn in rate allows me to keep a little more roll as I get to my slow point. Um, and that is something I am seeing in my data, which I'll share when we're uh, done looking at video. I'm trying to carry the brakes, the slow points around where I'm at right now. And there's a, a little bit of a drive going through this corner. 
up to the um, top of crash corner. Uh, I kind of make it a straight line and then I hold the bike as close to the top of this crash corner as possible because I feel like it's a little less off camber there. Um, so we'll see, I, I kind of make this a straight line. Good amount of braking here because of the amount of throttle I'm adding. Um, I think smoothing that out to have less throttle and less brake may be a little bit less dramatic in this corner. Um, something to play with next time. Same thing here. I think I'm holding the radius too long. Um, we see that we were pretty... Coming into this corner, I'm, I'm gaining a little bit on this rider, but on the exit, they're absolutely destroying me. And I believe the real reason here is that I'm holding this radius a little too long and my slow point is too late into this corner. Partly could be also caused by just rushing the entry with too much throttle um, back here. And we'll see on the exit, um, they're doing a fantastic job driving out of this corner and it's an area I was struggling with all weekend. And so you'll see, I don't believe I'm also using all the track on the exit here, but I, we just held that radius too long. And this rider's already has some get up and go and we are um, waiting too long. I was also taking this in third gear. Second felt a little too, too high, um, but third feels a little bit bogged. So something to also look at playing with next time I'm there. And look at that, didn't use all the track. We've got two feet. Um, which is just free acceleration. And a lot of that's just by holding that radius too long. So we will try um, making the transition earlier between crash corner and uh, the next one. Brake markers about the three cone. There's a little bit of straight up and down braking, but I found that um, if I initiate my turn in a little, um, and I don't know if you'd call it a fade into the corner, but this is an entry corner and we want it to be pushed wide. So I like initiating this with a gradual turn in, a slow rate of turn, a slow turn in rate and a pretty early turn in point. Um, and I found that it is the best way to get me out wide here in the middle. And here, I think I need to add throttle earlier. Uh, right now I'm adding throttle about after I pass this cone and it feels a little too late because I have to wait forever to get the bike to come back um, for the drive out. So something to try next time I'm there is just adding a little throttle earlier. And I think what will help there is just getting eyes out to this curbing sooner. This, this cone is just like a magnet for your eyes and it makes you want to stare at it, but you have to be really deliberate about once you've hit this reference and know you're going to get there to ignore it and move on to the next reference. See, that throttle feels too late for me. Um, we're not using all the track here. We're not, we're forcefully driving out, but that's going to have me be too fast up here where this rider is at, and it's going to cause me to have a late exit here. Um, there's like two line approaches here. One is use all the track on this exit get to about mid track and then treat this as an entry corner where you're trailing the brakes past the apex. The other is to use only half of the exit. Um, so delay your build such that you can get over to the left earlier and then initiate your, um, almost treat this like an exit corner where you're hard on the brakes on the curbing here. And then as you turn in, you can get to the throttle around the apex, if not just before it, and drive out to the curbing. Um, I think both are valid. I think in a race situation, using all the exit and treating this like an entry corner is probably the more defensible line. However, I think it carries a little more risk just because you're trailing the brakes um, at a good amount of lean here. And if anything goes wrong, there's not um, a lot of room for you to collect the bike back up um, before running off. That tree is a good reference as you're coming in here on the brakes, just to get your visual system um, oriented to where you're going next. Here, we're gonna drive out to this curbing and we wanna build that drive early because we do wanna get the bike to come back for this second apex.
So we're back to where we started, right? We used all the curving on this exit and we're gonna get over quickly and then go for the three. Uh, try to get to the three cone for our break marker. That's it. Um, thank you for watching. If I end up posting this on the internet, um, if you have any questions, hit me up. It's uh, Jolo Moto on Instagram and uh, opensource.racing is the website. Cheers.